All right, so if, uh, yeah, that stuff that starts with an E, um, epitalin, epithelian, epi, epi, I'm going to call it epi. All right, so here's the deal. Basically, I have this disc, and it has syringes. It's getting real now, boys. All right, so here's what you do, is you get your bacteriostatic water. Now, you will have 100 milligrams in said vial. So, what you would do for research in your fish fall, monkey mouse, saber tooth, spider cricket, griffin from newroids.com that you bought. Um, first, oh, damn, hold on, and then screwed it over. All right. Prep bath, okay? And that's not even for anything more than the bottles. Like, you can use them on yourself, but always, always, always be clean. Like, I know this guy one time, he got staph in his blood. Damn near killed his ass. It's horrible. All right, so take, peel, top off the ink, and yes, this does not have a label on it, believe it or not. That's how they come. Here. Um, sometimes they'll send them to me without labels. I don't have to take them off and put ours on. Because um, basically, you know, I just shop around for the absolute best stuff on earth. And now, this is an insulin syringe now here's the deal is do you see that that one is going to be much different all right here you see that this is what you're going to use if you're going to do it injection style into your fish frog monkey mouse saber tooth spider cricket like a lot of us and he'll do it simply right in the fat right there you say there's no fat right there but you do it in the fat. Shut up. All right, right under the skin, it's a subcutaneous injection. If you're going to do it that way, if you're going to snort it, then that's a different ball game. But that's not what you're going to use to fill it. See, what we use to fill it is a intramuscular needle. Okay. Now the intramuscular syringes are longer and bigger. So you can get more of it faster. That way it doesn't take all day to do this. Now, personally, here's my thinking in these things is you honestly, depending on how much product you're wanting to administer to your fish frog, monkey mouse, saber tooth, spider cricket, that will determine how much bacteriostatic water you use. Now, what I mean by that is, obviously, the more of this I put into this 100 milligrams, the more of liquid there is going to be to inject or snort or put in eye of research animal. The thing is, if you get too little, then it will not saturate well. If there is too much, then you're going to have a lot to push into your research animal. And honestly, shoving a bunch of fluid into the fat in your research animal probably ain't the best idea for him. You know what I mean? He probably just ain't going to be really cool with that. So my ideal situation would be I would take that and break it down in tenths. So 10 milligrams per serving, making, if I fill this all the way up, that's one cc, an ml and a cc are the same thing. Stop getting confused about this stupid shit. All right, now, 100 on this is going to be basically 10 because so, we're talking about 
one cc being a whole, you break it down into tenths. So that's going to be a hundred milligrams. Basically, take your stick, right? Right, okay. Now we take and we suck it, suck it, suck it. And generally, if you were doing this in like a test vial or something like that, then what you would do is you would take and fill it full of air first, shove it in there so you have it pushing back against you. That makes the whole situation so much easier. Um, it's one thing to you do all the work, but if you can, yeah, a lot of air in there. All right, let's see. So, all right, get her to suck all the way in there to probably right at your 100 or one cc or one ml. Okay, so now we take and you go Now you gotta watch this because those are normally, now you want to take it and slowly but surely put it in the little bottle and move it around. What this is going to do is it's going to not break any peptides. Peptides can be so funny little things in that many times they uh break like with hgh you have human growth hormone is 191 chain peptide amino acid what that means always dispose of those in the proper thing the proper thing is over there i'm just a really good shot um but these amino acid these amino chain peptides can be rather fragile so what you want to do is once you get the el liquido in there that's spanish um don't jar it too much and keep it you know properly in the proper temperature not in some direct sunlight don't get it too hot don't get it too cold basically because it'll break all that down and then all that money would be worthless we don't want to do that or at least my fish frog monkey mouse ain't, it's only worth so much. So basically, once that's done, always make sure that you are sanitary, okay? Alcohol kills everything. Enough of it will kill people. Cirrhosis happens all the time. So, and you don't drink this alcohol, by the way. Just note to self no drinky the sterilizing alcohol and then that should dissolve into 100 milligrams of epitalin epi epi 100 milligrams of epi not like an epinephrine pen but new epi we'll call it new e <laughs> anyway once that all dissolves then what one would do is take the smaller one, the little bitty subcutaneous, and you don't shove this in the muscle. I don't think that would be necessary. There's a story I should tell one day. But anyway, you will pull it to 10, and then snort it, bang it, plug it, put it in the eyeball of your research animal. That's pretty much all you need to know. Sterilize everything twice. Water, bottle, back out, administer, done. Peace.